Okay, and I'm just checking that I'm recording, and here we go. Okay, uh, releasing in Australian cinemas this month is a new horror feature called Baghead, and it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the executive producer of Baghead, Lorcan Riley. Lorcan, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you. Great to talk to you. And now this is based on your short film of uh, a few years ago um, that uh, you wrote um, and was directed by the same feature director, Alberto Corridor. Tell me about the the steps, the process from turning your short film into a feature film. Um, well, once we had uh, made the short film, uh, we went on the festival circuit and the response was really uh, good. People really enjoyed it. It won a bunch of awards. Um, we didn't really have to do much apart from put the movie out there and let the word spread because we were then contacted by uh, some producers who had heard about this short film, Baghead, that had won a bunch of awards and they reached out to us and they said, look, we'd like to take it out to various studios to see if they would like to adapt this in any way. And it, it finally found a home at Studio Canal and it became the movie we finally saw okay was there any particular inspiration behind your original short film uh, i at the time i was making short films with not a lot of money so i had to come up with ideas that were kind of set in one room with um just two or three actors and um, i was living in london at the time and i kind of got my heart set on maybe renting like a cellar or a basement in like a nearby pub something visually interesting um and i kind of i was mulling ideas about what could happen in this story and i kind of got onto the idea of a man going to uh speak to a medium to speak to use that medium to speak to a loved one um we've seen that kind of thing before in movies you bring a little personal memento and the person holds it and they contact the dead and they usually channel the voice and just as I was writing, I was probably like, what if medium just eats the thing and physically transforms into the dead person? So um, it was it, that the supernatural aspect was um, it was just, I guess, just a, a stroke of inspiration at the time. I was like, well, we've seen one thing before. Let's go that step further. Um, and that kind of brought in the supernatural aspect. Um, as far as the aesthetic of the witch and the bag and the clothing, um, that kind of came from a place that I was, at the time when I was writing the short, I was like, OK, how are we going to do this? You know, are we going to put an actress under a lot of heavy makeup to make her look like a 400 year old witch? That's going to be time consuming. That's going to be expensive. And I thought, well, let's just cover her up with like a a bag on her head and you know cover up a baggy clothing and then we can just put maybe a little bit of makeup on her chin or her hand to suggest because we know um there she is a witch but by just suggesting these little things you get the idea that she's incredibly old underneath all this stuff so um with a with a lot of good ideas it re it's really more of a case of you're looking at what you can do and you kind of work through all the various ideas until you finally get some kind of inspiration. How very interesting and clever. I'd like to hear that background. It's, it is so, so uh, interesting and creative. So how was your involvement with uh, turning this short film into a feature film? Because I noticed that there are two screenwriters attached to it. Yeah, um, the, I didn't write the feature length film. There was other writers, as is the case with a, once you move into Hollywood, everyone gets rewritten. Every, obviously it was just myself and Alberto doing the short film so it was just us involved and our money um, but once it got optioned other people and other people's money gets involved and everyone has different ideas so uh, I just gave them a rough idea of like what I think I would do and various ideas and some things make it through to the short or make it through to the feature film and some things don't so uh, they um, they brought in another writer and then brought on another writer, which is the case with a lot of feature films these days. So there's a lot of ideas there to finally get to the point where they finally roll cameras and go, this is what we want to make. Okay. So uh, are you happy with the way the uh, the feature now has progressed in terms of your original idea and where it sits now? Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, 
the idea in the short is there and it's quite contained. So all you can do is really embellish it. You can't, a feature film can't take away from anything from the short. All they can do is just attract other people's inspiration and ideas to come in and build upon what you did in the short. Um, yeah, I'm, look, I mean, there's plenty of filmmakers out there who would love the opportunity to see their short developed into a longer feature film and and to sit in a cinema screen and see it play in front of an audience. So, yeah, delighted to see how it turned out. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, absolutely. And and it really is uh, quite an effective uh, horror film, I must say. It's it, uh, with some nice twists and turns in the story. And I was I was just thinking about how your short film matches up with the feature and the additional uh, aspects that were introduced into the feature film. Yeah, the groundwork, I mean, it's obviously we had a 15 minute runtime with a short. So we take a general premise and we've got one or two twists in there. But now you're making a 90 minute feature. So you're probably spacing those. If you reuse the same twist, you're spacing them out a little bit more, maybe adding on your other little twists and story developed developments. And obviously there's going to be other characters created for the feature film and they have their backstories. So, um, yeah, it, it was a it was a nice thing to say. Yes, and Alberto Corridor is is a really good director. Uh, obviously, he did a short and now the feature. Um, how much did you work with him in terms of uh, creating the final product? Um, we obviously once we had we talked a lot about when we had the short film on the festival circuit. We talked about a million different ways we could do this, we could do that, but it was. At that point, like nobody was investing in it. So it was all kind of just ideas up in the air or whatever. Um, so once uh, the ball got rolling on the feature length film, all those ideas were there with Alberto. And obviously he discussed with the writers that came on about what he wanted to do. And they had their own ideas from the inspiration that they got from the short. And obviously the producers have their ideas. And it's just a big conversation um, about what, they think is the best thing to do within the budgets that was available to them. Yes, yes. Okay, no, that's fair enough. I understand. Now, I, I know the film was shot at uh, Studio Babelsberg in uh, in Berlin, and uh, I've, I've visited that studio a number of times. Uh, were you at all involved with the, the shooting of the film? No, it was, I mean, no, this was all during COVID. So I'm, I'm based way down in New Zealand. So nobody was going <laughs> anywhere when all of this was going on. So um, no, I wasn't over there. Okay, okay, but uh, you obviously have uh, uh, have seen the uh, the the, uh, the final product, the film, and uh, how is the look of the film to you? Does it give you that perspective that you wanted from your original short film? Yeah, it look it looks great. I mean, the original short. I mean, we had a little bit of money to work on, and we but we had a very um, professional crew. We had. We had people who worked on feature films and they had read the short script and said, OK, we'll work on your short for a little bit cheaper than we usually charge for because we really like the idea. And um, so that looked great. And I could tell at the time when Alberto did a short that he could he had a, a very strong visual eye and he's taken that over into the feature film. And it's got him. It's uh, it, it's got a great look to it. It's kind of it's weirdly an old fashioned i don't know old fashioned kind of look in a modern setting you know it, it it's got a it, it's got a nice uh, look to it yes yes it is a very effective horror film so uh, and uh, Lorcan Riley we're talking to is the executive producer and just to conclude um are you working on other films at the moment i'm well i'm a writer so i'm always writing some things i'm hoping within the next few weeks if some money falls into place that I will be shooting um, another short that I've been working on in a while and um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Has Baghead been released in uh, New Zealand? It releases next week, the Thursday the 22nd. Ah, about the same time as Australia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Has the film also been released elsewhere? It's uh, it first released in Germany just here at the end of December. It's been released in the UK and Ireland. I and it it's in Latin America. The past couple of weeks, it's just opened across um, Brazil and Mexico and South America, a few countries down there. So it's kind of getting a sporadic release across a few different countries. 
Sure. Have you had any responses so far? Um. Yeah, people. I mean, I've obviously I've got me and friends. I, I've seen it, and I, I I don't know. It's it's weird. It did they, they quite liked it. You know, they were like they liked how it it took the central idea and developed it. Um. But yeah, they kind of do kind of look at you a bit weird. I mean, they kind of like, how do you come up with these ideas? You know, they're kind of, you're just like, okay. Okay. Look, congratulations on the film. We've been speaking to uh, Lorcan Riley, the executive producer of Baghead, which is a screening in Australian cinemas from February 22nd. Thank you so much, Lorcan, for talking with me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.